Hey guys, I'm here at the Minnesota Egg Expo in Mankato, Minnesota. I'm gonna walk around and see who I can find to talk to. I'm also gonna take a look at this cute little pickup back here. Can I put you on my YouTube channel? I'm here with Jake of the Irrigators Association of Minnesota. Jake, can you tell me anything interesting and cool that maybe a non-farmer wouldn't know about irrigating? Well, recently technology in the irrigating, irrigation world has uh, took off just like any other industry. It can um, control and monitor our pivots from off our cell phones. So in other words, that means we can turn them off and turn them on anywhere in the world if we have cell phone reception or um, wireless internet. So for those who don't know, Jake farms about 10 miles or less from where I farm. You want to be on the show this summer and we can go around and take a look at some irrigators and check it out I would love in real time. I would love to see one in action and I'll, uh, I have some uh, soil moisture monitoring tools I'll uh, um, show you guys and and uh, because we want to we want to make sure we're putting on the right amount and we're not over watering so I've invested in some soil moisture tools um, and it gives me uh, soil moisture levels and I can make irrigation decisions off that um, so I know I'm, I'm putting on the right amount at the right time and, and I'm not wasting water. Well there you go look forward to a special celebrity appearance by Jake this summer. So I'm here with the Blue Earth County Soil and Water Conservation District. I'm talking to Holly and uh, she's got some examples here of cover crops and what farmers can do with cover crops in their fields to try to uh, keep the water cleaner that's coming off their field. Basically dealing with runoff, right? Yep, yep. And, and basically keeping, keeping the field from eroding and keeping the soil in the field. This is a rain pop simulator. Okay, at this point I have to apologize. What I was trying to do was hold the camera behind me in order to make it a more uh, dynamic and a more engaging conversation. Being only one camera guy, I wasn't able to see the camera behind me and I wasn't really sure what the camera was showing. And uh, as I'm editing this, I'm realizing that I wasn't showing anything that she was talking about. So my apologies to you and my apologies to her. Basically what she had was a rainfall simulator and this is the only snapshot that I have of that simulator. Basically what it was was to simulate how rainfall would wash through the soil. One of them uh, simulated conventional tillage where the rainfall would flow through it fairly quickly uh, and a lot of sediment from the soil would wash back out through that water. The other one had a little bit of residue on top. They used wood chips for the simulator and uh, that residue would help a little bit of the sediment stay back. The third one had sediment on top with a cover crop to simulate a no-till situation where the farmer wasn't doing deep tillage uh, and planted a cover crop in order to have those roots hold the, the soil in place. That allowed the water to flow through it the slowest and the least amount of sediment came out of it. So the difference from you know, a conventional till to a no-till with, with the use of some cover crop. Right. You can yep. see that a lot of sediment you know, is staying in with the, with the cover crop no-till is staying in the soil where we want it. We want you to keep your fertilizer there. We want you to keep your soil there. We want right. it to be a healthier water system. The same as the farmer does. Yep. yep. Because the last place I want my soil is to run off into the, into the road. Right. And you don't want to waste, you literally dump the money on the dirt. Right. This okay. doesn't matter. Yeah, you can look either anywhere you want. Uh, so what can you tell me about the Minnesota Ag Water Quality Certification Program? Basically working with producers uh, to do an assessment of their operation, uh, and kind of determine where there might be some risk for water quality. Sure. We can figure out all the good things they're doing, as well as some of the improvements that we can address and maybe uh, improve water quality that way. This is a volunteer program, correct? It's voluntary. Yep. Okay. It's and voluntary but it also helps people in terms of different ways of compliance with some of the regulatory things out there. So, okay. so if somebody is needs a buffer, they sure. can come to our program to get the buffer, and it's specific to their farm operation versus the one size fits all kind of sure. situation. So besides, uh, besides the incentive of just being better for the environment, it kind of helps streamline some stuff for the farmers if they're working with other water quality issues or, or permits, things like that, is that correct? That's true, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, appreciate it. Yep. McDonald's has hooked its marketing on featuring farmers. Okay, you want me to look at the camera? Specific. 
you can just look at whatever you want to look at. That's what that's what we're doing here is make we're trying not to be too professional with it. So so I'm here with Daniel of the Minnesota Honey Producers Association, and I'm interested to get your take on uh, some of the debates or the discussions about honeybees and agriculture and how they relate to each other within the state. Obviously, the big one being the, the neonic issue and the colony collapse. What are your thoughts on those two things? So, yeah, there's some debate whether it's uh, neonics is, you know, is the main culprit in the, you know, in the health of our bees, the decline in the health of our bees, or is it, you know, pest, you know is it uh, forage, is it parasites, and, it, and the answer is it's kind of all three, it's, there's no one smoking gun. Um, you know the, the neonics and pesticides is part of the part of the problem. It's like a three-legged stool, but we have a lack of, of good honeybee forage. We have a lack of legumes. Uh, legumes haven't been included in the CRP mix since 1995. And legumes, the clovers, alfalfa, that's something that the bees need. That's something that they developed with millions of years ago yep. in Europe. But the honeybees and clover is considered introduced species, so we can't get that included in the CRP or bee mixes here in Minnesota. Because it's not considered it's a native. It's not native, oh, so sure. na everything's native, sure. native. That gets the uh, uh, all that emphasis placed on that. So are you a farmer? I'm a bee farmer. I run, yep. you know, I have 2,000 hives. Uh, I send some out to California for pollination. I bring my hives to Texas in the winter, and I raise about 4,000 mated queens and uh, about 20,000 unhatched queens. And, you know, I put in 80 hours a week, just, sure. just like a farmer. I appreciate it. Thank you. It yeah, good thank you. you. Can I put you on my YouTube channel? Of course. You want of all course. On there? Yep. Does that does that make you camera shy if you're on YouTube? Not at all. Does that make you nervous? Never. No. Not very nervous. We're all over you. Oh, you. I have a really important question. What, what How much can you squat? Because I did 265 yesterday. About 760. Yeah, right. That's, that's, that's more. That's just about three times more. A little bit more, but not one after. No? I'm like, I can do about 7. You couldn't have caught like 3. You know, 761? I knew it. I knew it would be shorter, though. Yeah, but he's, uh, yeah. Uh, he plays possum. You don't know what you're going to get when he shows up to any game. He outdoes everything. Boom. Nice. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you, buddy. So what do you see as far as the big issues within the state and what, what is agriculture doing uh, to make sure that we're doing the right thing as far as water quality goes within the state of Minnesota? Well, I think it's up to each one of us to understand our role as, as it pertains to water quality. So the rain that falls on my farm, I don't have a lot of control over how much rain that I get. But I do have control on how I use that water once it's on my farm, and then in addition, how it leaves my landscape as well. My goal is to have the water leaving my landscape in as good a quality as I can possibly have it leave. And I think that's a common goal among among uh, most farmers. So what do you have any examples of uh, specific things you might do on your farm or things that you do do to, uh, to make sure that that water does leave in, in good shape? Well, that's a great question. I do this little exercise when I have non-farmers in particular come to my farm. I pull out a list of 31 conservation-minded practices that are examples right there before. That so you're actually one, putting into practice yourself on that piece of dirt. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And so the point is, when you're driving down the road and you see corn and beans, corn and beans, corn and beans, and you think, well, it all looks the same. I'll tell you what, there's an awful lot more going on than just corn and bean fields. There's an awful lot of management of the resources yep. and an awful lot of care that goes into how those resources are being used. Right, absolutely. Well, thanks, Bruce. Appreciate it. Zach, I appreciate the opportunity. Dominoes stood its ground not long ago when they had other industry advocates. I think that's the correct way that I'm allowed to say it now. Uh, say, we never tell a farmer how to farm. All right, I'm awkwardly standing here in the middle of the hallway with uh, Mike Pettifish from uh, Minnesota Soybean. 
And I wanted to ask you, uh, Mike, well, by the way, he looks a little bit weird because he raised money last night for the uh, association by getting his head shaved and his beard and the eyebrows, I see. Uh, as a Minnesota farmer, I know that trade is really important to what we do. Uh, can you talk uh, real quick about why trade and why NAFTA is so important to Minnesota farmers? The majority of our products are exported. Um, if you think about soybeans, it's something like 52% get exported. So if you're driving by a soybean field and you see all the rows, every other row essentially leaves the country. It's going somewhere it's else. It's going somewhere yeah. else. And a lot of people talk about China, but, but Mexico really is our number two buyer of soybeans. It's our number one buyer of corn. It's one of our top buyers of, co of pork and chicken. And so this NAFTA deal is, is really important for farmers because we have a lot of products that can freely flow back and forth between the countries. Uh, between Canada, the United States, and Mexico, you know, whether it's blueberries or, or lumber or coal or whether it's you know, manufacturing parts and stuff from Mexico, and that 0% that tariff allows that free flow of, of things that affects not just egg products and, and egg incomes and, and egg economies, but household items and, and the prices of those. And if you live in a, in a rural area, but you're not a farmer, I want you to think about what is it that, that keeps your small town and your, your small economy going. And most of the time it is egg, and egg land oftentimes carries the, the burden for uh, schools, for property taxes. Yep. And so if you start harming agriculture through trade, you begin to harm farmers, which helps support those rural communities, and you, you, harm, you begin to harm rural education. And I think most people, when they think about trade, they just think about manufacturing, you know, computers and TVs, and they don't see the connection of trade with food and with farmers and how they're connected to farmers, whether they live in a rural community or not. Right. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, that's it, guys. I planned on talking to more people than that, but uh, honestly, what I did was walk around a lot and end up just talking to a lot of people off camera because there's so many people I know and so many interesting things to look at here. So hopefully you guys caught something from this video and learned a little bit of something. And uh, I'll be back next year again for the Minnesota Egg Expo. Thanks for watching. That's what I'm doing right now. You're going to be on there. You want me to interview you, dude?